power is now. My name is Eric Frazier. It's a beautiful day in Southern California. A great day to talk about real estate. And today in particular, we're going to be talking about fair housing. April is Fair Housing Month. And uh, thank God for Fair Housing Month. For many of us, without it, we may not be homeowners. We may not be real estate investors. We may not even be in the real estate business. And so I appreciate the legislation, the 1968 Fair Housing Act, and the impact that is made on Californians and on everyone in the United States. But there's still a lot of work to do. And there are great organizations out there that are fighting the good fight of making sure that everyone has the opportunity to become a homeowner. Uh, there is still, unfortunately, discrimination. There is still redlining. There are still lawsuits happening against banks and financial institutions. There are still people who are being denied access to credit and access to housing. So there is still a lot of work to do, and thank God for organizations like the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. Today, we have the president of the San Francisco chapter and the past president with us today to talk about fair housing and Realtors Week, which is unique to the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. Welcome, Janet and Norman, to The Power Is Now. Thank you very much, Eric, for having us. This is a wonderful forum to talk about the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, what our platform is, and what we want to do to invite more African-Americans to become homeowners and property owners. I am a broker associate with the firm uh, CP21 Real Estate Alliance, in addition to being acting president of the San Francisco Realtors Organization. We have about 400 agents, very active in the market. And I, my give back is the work that I do with individual borrowers, buyers, and in both in the Bay Area altogether, not just San Francisco, but throughout the Bay Area, helping them to become homeowners and telling them what they need to know, how they can empower themselves to be property owners. Janet, I appreciate uh, the work you're doing and you've been at it for a long time, right? How long have you been a, an associate broker, a real estate broker? Well, I've been a broker for 35 years, over 35 years. 35 years. So with this firm, I've been with this firm for about 11 years in the San Francisco market. But my, the majority of my business is in the East Bay, open and surrounding areas. Well, again, thank you for uh, joining me today to talk about fair housing and, um, and Realtors Week, which is coming up in, in a couple of weeks here in April. Norman, thank you again for joining us as well. You are the past president of the San Francisco chapter. Yes, I am uh, owner of Remax. I've been an owner here about 13 years in San Francisco. I am a proud minority owner, which is important to our city. Along with Janet, I assist her in working with the organization. Norman, uh, it is impressive to be one of few minority owners of a Remax franchise in the expensive high cost area of San Francisco. But congratulations, uh, you've been a broker owner for 13 years uh, and I can't wait to learn more about you know, how you're doing it because COVID-19 has been a challenge for many uh, real estate offices, uh, but you know the cream rises to the top only the strong survive, right? That's right. We do what we can. We adhere to all the protocols and we're working real hard to stay on top. So when we come out of this, we come out in good shape, which I'm sure we will. I'm confident we will because as uh, realtors, uh, we are known for per perseverance, right? And, uh, and working through all kinds of challenges. Um, in fact, I, I want you both to share a little bit about uh, what it is to be a realtor, but before we do, uh, we have a tradition on this show where we ask all our guests, what does the phrase, the power is now, mean to you in the context of who you are and what you do professionally? Let's start with you, Janet. You know, I love the phrase, the power is now. That's a great phrase, and it, the meaning it has for me is the power we have 
individually and collectively to change things. There are not many um, areas that you work in, that you have an opportunity to work in where you can actually make change, actually change people's lives, change your own life. And we have the power as real estate professionals to do that. And especially in the community, my mother used to ask me, are you in real estate or are you in social work? Because all of my deals, or most of my deals, happen to be challenging in a good way and helping the people move the needle from where they are to where they want to be, both professionally, personally, and especially as homeowners. So the power is now, and if we can live that phrase, we got it down. So thank you for coming up with that phrase. <laughs> you know, I wish I could take credit. I give my wife the credit. <laughs> <laughs> the power is now. And Janet, what a wonderful uh, power is now statement. And you're absolutely right. As real estate professionals, we are changing lives. Acquiring a home is perhaps the greatest expense, the greatest investment, the, the most debt. It's a significant a milestone in anyone's life. And it is life changing. And so I, I agree with you. We have the power to change lives. That's a quote, folks, from Janet Halliburton. <laughs> what does the powers now mean to you? I, I think for me, when I hear that, and when I hear that from you, uh, which I first yeah. heard 10 years ago, it, it's a call to action. It's not, the, the, the power is always there but it's a call to action to grab that power, to take advantage of that power and to use that power. So it's just not the power, it's always there. But to me, you have gave us a call to action. Get it, use it, and do something positive with it. So that's, that's how I do it. Norman, man, both of you guys are full of great quotes this morning. The power is always there. You're absolutely right, because the power is ever present, right? And so, but you have to take action. You have to, uh, to grab that power, right? You gotta use that power. You gotta leverage that power. You have to take action. And I totally agree with you. It truly is a call to action. Well, uh, you've just heard from two extraordinary leaders in the San Francisco area. Norman Green, Janet Halliburton, current president, Norman past president of the San Francisco chapter of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. They're called Real Tis. And we're gonna ask them more about that designation when we come back after this commercial break. You're listening to The Power Is Now. We'll be right back. Many Californians fear that they will not be able to pay their rent next month. Financial education and literacy are the catalyst for relief. So what resources are out there? A State of California program connects you with a HUD certified housing counselor who can assist you on your financial education journey with no cost to you. Call today at 1-800-569-4287. Again, that is 1-800-569-4287. And we're back for those of you just joining us. Welcome to The Power Is Now. Today is a special day. We're talking to leaders across the country. In fact, today we're focusing in on the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. The National Association of Real Estate Brokers has been around a long time, folks, since 1947. And they have a chapter in San Francisco being currently led by Janet Halliburton and Norman Green, past president. So far, we've had a great conversation about what the power is now means to them and also just their career in real estate and really how passionate they are to do what they're doing. Norman being the owner, minority owner of Remax in San Francisco and Janet being at the helm as a broker for 35 years, helping people to achieve the American dream. Norman and Janet. And Janet, you go first. The National Association of Real Estate Brokers is a, an incredible organization. I am a proud member 
Uh, we're called realtors. And can you, Janet, just explain what a realtor is? And, you know, why do we call ourselves realtors as opposed to realtors? Well, as you mentioned earlier, Eric, in 1947, a group of, a group of men and women across, from across the country got together to form NARAB, National Association of Real Estate Brokers, because they found that they could not join the real tours. The majority, the majority own, um, I should say, association for real estate professionals at that time. It was very difficult. There was a lot of discrimination. And these, these fine men and women got together and said, no, we're going to be professional. We're going to give the best service to our clients. And they formed the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. Thank goodness we've come a long way since then. But it wasn't really until 1968 during the civil rights movement that the doors really opened up for uh, real tours who welcomed or who began to welcome to follow the law and welcome uh, people of color, African-Americans into the organization. So it's been a long time coming and we're still working on parity and uh, recognition for the African Americans who serve the public. The realtors have a certain calling. We serve all people. I want to get that straight because sometimes people feel like we're only working for African Americans, but what we're doing is we're working to bring our African Americans in inclusive into the area of home ownership and property ownership and to underscore the fact that they have the rights and, and uh, responsibility to go along with that. One of the reasons, one of the things that we, we hold um, important is the education. Because um, when I first came to the company I'm with right now, uh, it's a majority Asian. And uh, I saw a distinct difference in the way that they put themselves out to the public. They were on every every week, every month. You could you couldn't go into a store that was closed that was served by Asians, where you would not see their faces, dozens of faces, with real estate. And the message was, "I'm here to serve you. I'm here to help you to build your your wealth and to buy property." We, on the other hand, sometimes are a little timid in terms of showing the opportunity, sharing the opportunity with our community. And so, and, and sometimes we wonder, well, gee, why didn't they uh, come to us? Well, that's not the way it works. We have to do a better job of marketing, a better job of letting people know the doors are open for you. If you are disciplined and follow the, the rules of the road and make choices as to how you spend your money, there are opportunities out there. And one of the things that realtors do in addition to the uh, educa is education and sharing the ways of financing, of owning, of um, getting yourself prepared to be an owner and maintain, maintaining and retaining your property. So these are all things that we as an organization strive to do so that we can build the level of home ownership in the country. Janet, thank you for that a very detailed explanation. And um, uh, I think it's important for people to recognize too uh, in your most in your earlier point that we serve everybody. Uh, the fact that you are working in a predominantly Asian community, right, and uh, Asian real estate office, right, um, shows that we are not the ones discriminating, right? <laughs> we are inclusive, not exclusive. We're not just an organization for Black people, right? We're, we are open to help everyone achieve the American dream. In fact, uh, isn't, Norman, that where we get the phrase democracy and housing? Yeah, that is. And, and just to add to it, in, in general, when you view minority organizations, and if you're not a minority, one thing you should remember is that a rising tide floats all boats. So we're bringing up that level for everyone, not just ourselves. We just focus on ourselves because we have a long ways to come. So you should feel, you can feel as a non-minority empowered by these organizations too, because ultimately everyone will benefit from what we do. To Norman's point, the Asian American Real Estate Association and 
the Hispanic American Real Estate Association, were all encouraged by the formation of the NARAD. And they have copied their model from the model that NARAD set to focus on their community and to highlight the ways that they were prevented from entering into the real estate. So we were a forerunner of the other association. That is great to hear. Uh, but you know what? Haven't we always been forerunners? Yes. And from the Civil Rights Act to the Fair Housing Act, uh, I mean, to even, I mean, the, pro the, the uh, proclamation emancipation or the emancipation proclamation <laughs> wouldn't have happened without us, right? <laughs> so we've always been forerunners and uh, this is just another example. And, but, you know, there are those who think that there's something wrong with, you know, an all, uh, you know, an organization devoted to just African-Americans or an organization devoted just to Hispanics or to Asian. Why can't we all just be Americans? Uh, and I know, at least for me, that is such short-sighted thinking because each of these communities have their own unique set of problems. And ultimately, uh, doesn't the solution for any community have to come from within? Can they really look from without their organizations or their communities for help? Don't they really have to, to get something done Look within. Uh, yes, that is absolutely true, Eric. But you know, I think there was a milestone uh, in 2020 that started with unfortunate death of George Floyd. When people started to really look and see that they had their image of what they were really doing, of how they were contributing to the situation changed. There was a shift. It started with, with the gentleman passing and it went across the world and across the country because people realized that, you know, they were thinking, well, gee, that's not really a problem or we have this in place and that in place. One of the things that happened was this NARAB president called a meeting of the large franchises across the country and said to them, what, what is your, what, how do you evaluate the way you are handling situations of race and discrimination in housing and as far as your brokers and agents, it made them take, it made them pause. They had all thought about it even before coming onto the program, but it made them really look and evaluate how they were addressing discrimination in housing and also in the persons that they were represented at their company. This is a landmark situation, landmark panel. And I was very impressed with the responses that they each could really do something to improve the situation in the way they trained their agents and in the way their hiring practices and who they brought into the company to be inclusive. Now, NARAP initiated this uh, survey among these college real estate franchises? Yes, we did. We had a, a, a panel meeting uh, with all of the major franchises. Ours Reality was one. Um, Compass is another, I think REMAX is also in, in that one. And uh, there were just like six, e EXP was one. So there were major franchise uh, heads from across the country and it was quite revealed. Uh, that's wonderful that they are number one, recognizing the, the problem. And um, George Floyd, and as we all know, the trial is going on right now of George Floyd and Derek Chauvin. And it's hard to watch without getting emotional. And the testimonies that have taken place so far are just almost too much to handle, at least for me. And, yeah. um, and I think every African-American right now is full of anxiety uh, that we may not get the result that we're looking for. Um, and we probably wouldn't be surprised because we have been down this road before. Um, George Floyd's situation is uh, a case of, uh, of just uh, the criminal justice system and the mistreatment or the maltreatment of African-Americans by police officers. Mm -hmm. This month is about fair treatment of uh, people of color and of people of, with disabilities and people of different gender or sexual orientation, fair housing, is really addressing the same kind of issue, the, the, the 
unfair treatment of individuals um, as it relates to either renting or buying a home. Uh, and I want to talk to you both about that uh, in more detail in just a minute. But before we go there, I got to know, uh, first, how long have you both been members of NARAP and why did you become a member of the organization? Let's start with you, Norman. I've been a member oh, roughly 10 years. And uh, one of the members told me about the organization maybe about a year before I actually joined. And I was, um, okay, yeah, I'll check it out sooner or later. But what sold me on joining NARAP was I went to a convention. And when I went to that convention, I saw the camaraderie of the people. I felt the vibe in the room. I felt how genuine everyone was in, 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 and that was inspiring to me. And from then I was hooked, I joined. That put me in the organization. Janet, what about you? Well, my experience was similar to uh, Norman. I first went to a NARAP convention. I think it was in Atlanta. Uh, and I was stunned because I, being in the communities that we serve, as you said, there are not many African Americans. And Norman is unique, and he, he is one of a handful of broker owners in San Francisco. But when I went to this convention in Atlanta, I was so stunned because there was a room, a ballroom full of African-American people in real estate. And I was like, oh my goodness, I could hardly contain myself. And this is what the power of the organization does. It takes you out of your limited area and takes you into another world where African-Americans are doing business across the country, are, are owning businesses. One gentleman owned 10 offices. He was, a, uh, this was years ago, so he wasn't a franchise. His own company, he owned, I think this was in Tennessee. And it just really opened my mind to the power that we had. And more recently, the reason why I got more involved, because then I was a sponsor and a member, but I got more involved when I heard about the mission to put 2 million, home, to have 2 million homeowners in five years. And also, the, I first became aware of what's called the Sheba Report, the state of housing in Black America. Those two things were just a shift for me because number one, it took it out of the, um, out of the um, realm of a, just an activist supportive educational into the spotlight where we were really highlighting the disparity between home, among home ownership among African Americans. And then we had a plan to do something about it. Those two things really galvanized me to become more involved. Janet, you know, uh, it looks like we all have the same experience uh, because I too was overwhelmed when I went to my first convention. And uh, the first, I would say, words that came to mind when I saw all those beautiful Black people, you know, dressed to the nines. Mm -hmm and doing uh, just uh, owning their own businesses and successful in real estate and talking and networking. Uh, it was just a beautiful picture of black success in real estate. And then it's unfortunate that, you know, it's not something that we see every day. You know, you have to go to a convention, <laughs> you know, you don't see that in your neighborhoods or in your cities. And in, and which is why it's so important that NARAP has chapters and, and African-American agents and people of color can come together and to share information and to support each other and to empower each other. And that whole cultural, you know, Afrocentric uh, sensitivities that we all have, you know, can be be uh, enjoyed and, and, and maybe um, celebrated. Celebrated, yes, yes, thank you. And uh, so it's, it's, uh, it was an experience for me and I, you know, soon after that became a chapter president in Orange County for close to 10 years and I've never looked back. I, I love this organization and what they're doing. You mentioned the, uh, a couple of initiatives that two million and five and uh, California uh, has the uh, bragging rights. Our president, Ron Cooper, uh, is the one that initiated the campaign. Yeah. 
two and five, and every president since then has been carrying that mantle started by California. And so uh, uh, for our state chapters out there, you know that that came from California. <laughs> Now, also, too, the uh, buy the house and the car uh, came from Donnell Williams, the current president, right? And uh, this is uh, another campaign. Uh, can you share some other campaigns that are kind of bringing uh, the attention of the importance of homeownership to our community? In NARAB, we have a lot of divisions and initiatives. You can go to NARAB.com and see what's available. We have like the young realtors aimed at bringing young people into the business. We also have a, a, a site that's for commercial uh, and you can learn a lot like that. Oftentimes we don't think about commercial. So it's an area where there's a lot of opportunity and it's a good area to look at, so. Thank you for that, uh, Norman. You know, uh, you're reminding me of when I started a NARAP was really instrumental in helping a realtors get uh, contracts to sell bank owned properties. Mm -hmm. um, as we all know, we may be coming back into uh, a period in which uh, foreclosures will increase due to COVID-19 and other challenges. Uh, and so NARAP has always been instrumental in making sure that opportunity exists for their members to work with banks and other financial institutions. And so uh, there's a saying that I hear all the time that a neighbor will open doors uh, that, uh, that you can't open on your own. And so uh, membership is everything. We're going to uh, take a break. Uh, and when we come back, I wanna to talk to you about Realtors Week. And it's, I, it's interesting. It's interesting that Realtors Week is in uh, Fair Housing Month in April. And so uh, folks, you're listening to The Powers Now. We're talking to Janet Halliburton, current president of San Francisco chapter, Norman Green, past president, here at The Powers Now, talking about Fair Housing and Realtors Week. We'll be right back, right after this. Want to keep up with the current developments happening in the world of real estate? The Real Estate Roundtable, hosted by Eric L. Frazier, is a show you do not want to miss. The show features a panel of VIP agents who are passionate about helping people. It is what they do best. They discuss today's hot topics, latest market updates and trends. The panel also conducts interviews with prominent figures in the industry. New episode every Friday live on Facebook and replay on the Power Is Now YouTube channel. And we're back. For those of you just joining us, welcome to The Power Is Now. We're talking to Janet Halliburton, president of the San Francisco chapter of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers and Norman Green, past president. And folks, we've been having a great conversation about what it is to be a realtor in the organization and the benefits of membership. And we're going to get into that a little bit more in a few minutes. But I, I want to ask them about Fair Housing and Realtors Week. A Realtors Week is a great opportunity for NARAP to really talk about its history and uh, its, its, its impact. Yes, it is. Realtors Week is that opportunity to get more exposure to both our community and to the general real estate profession at large. One of the things this year, I think, again, we talked about how real estate professionals were brought up to a, a higher level of conversation as a result of last year. And to that end, the National Association of Realtors made a public, a policy, a public apology for the past policies that had to do with their housing. And I think that's going to continue this year. And um, in addition to that, our goal in our local chapter is to really put some numbers up and let people know how many African Americans were able to get into housing. Norman and I were talking earlier about the challenges that you face, especially in San Francisco. Do you want to talk about that, Norman? 
Yeah, just a little bit. We have a, um, our city, as you all know, gentrification. We're really in the midst of that. And it's due to a lot of factors. We're in a predominantly tech-oriented area in addition to rising prices. And that is putting a lot of pressure on minorities to move out of the city and not rebuy into the city. So we're kind of dealing with that, uh, getting that worked out, which is a tough challenge in itself. One that's being said, seen in various parts of the country. So that's what we're dealing with here locally. But gentrification is affecting um, African Americans and you know people of color and, and low to moderate income people everywhere. You know, uh, for those who have money. And our homeowners, they look at it as progress. And those who don't, uh, they look at it as being pushed out. And uh, that's what's happening. Uh, and I know that San Francisco, I, the last time I checked, the medium sales price in San Francisco was over a million dollars, like a million one, right? This year, I think it's even higher. It's even higher than that. So what, what, uh, what are some of the things the chapter... Is, is doing and, and, and the national organization is doing to, I'm not sure if you can do anything to stop gentrification, but what can you do to ensure that, you know, minorities are getting a fair shot at buying a home and, and, and keeping housing fair under the fair housing law? Well, well one of the things we could do, it's a, it's a great market in terms of the fact that the rates are low. I mean, they're almost giving a house away because when you have two and three percent interest, it's a great time to buy. And the question is, but the prices are so high that it prevents purchase. So one of the things we're doing is educating our members on alternative ways of financing and, and having them educate the buyers on alternative ways of financing. For instance, instead of thinking, I'll have my own home at first, maybe you can buy a duplex with a friend or family member. Maybe you can get um, a uh, condo to start with, or there's something, there's a, a, a financing now where you can do ship, equity gifts from a family member or a lease option. I mean, you just, it's like find a way to get in, find a way. And we are looking for all of those alternatives and, and special programs. The banks are offering grants and that kind of thing. So this is a time to think about working together and being creative and just deciding, hey, I'm going to go for it. Whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. This is what we're trying to encourage our buyers to do. Is the chapter putting on uh, seminars or workshops for, to talk about these you know, strategies? Some of them outside of the box, some uh, are in the box they just don't know about. Exactly. We haven't, we're getting ready to now that things have loosened up a little bit. Yes, we're planning to uh, put on some seminars to, to educate uh, the public. Well, the Powers Now is committed to homeownership and we'll be happy to promote any events that you have coming up, both in our magazine, radio show, and TV show, uh, because uh, knowledge is power, right? And the power is now. I remember that I went to the seminar that you did in Richmond a couple of years ago. That was excellent. So you can come back to our area and, and help to promote those. I would be honored. I would be honored to come to San Francisco. And, uh, you know, today with technology, um, Zoom. You don't have to come. You can just. <laughs> yes, Zoom meetings. In fact, I just concluded a Zoom homebuyer seminar just the other week, and it was very successful. And I think it's easier for many people today because we're all adapting, right? Kids are learning from home using Zoom. Who doesn't, you know, was it two or three years ago, nobody knew of Zoom. Now I've had Zoom for close to seven years, but nobody really knew of Zoom. Now it's a household. <laughs> it, is a, it is a household name, right? And everybody has it. so. Uh, conducting seminars online is the way to go to just reach more people. Uh, Norman, as a broker owner, uh, what are your challenges in working with buyers? And do you work with buyers, first of all, in this high cost city? 
Uh, I should ask the same of you, Janet. You, you're working with buyers or, or is it really just uh, seller time now? No, it's working with buyers too. Uh, and, and the challenges are on the financing side. You know that. That's, that's always where it is. It's just negotiating those hurdles and getting them through that. And if you can do that to place them in a home, that requires on our end to be very knowledgeable or have someone like you, Eric, who is knowledgeable in the finance area to get our buyers through. Well, well, it is. Uh, someone told me the other day, the number one reason, the number one reason why most deals fall out of escrow or don't close is because of the financing. That's number one, number one. Now, I haven't seen the actual stat. I don't know who quoted that, but it kind of resonates with me having been doing this for 40 years. <laughs> It would be a big problem. Uh, I really appreciate the time you guys are spending with me today, and our time is well spent. Uh, I want us to focus uh, for the last few minutes here, talk about uh, your organization, how often do you meet, uh, and uh, who can they reach out to to learn more about becoming a member. And in fact, we should take this time to talk about, you know, joining your organization. Can they do it online? What is the cost? Do you have to be African-American to be a realtor? No, you definitely don't have to be African-American. In fact, we want, we want to be inclusive to spread the word. And uh, we have members of different races. We have, even have one from Africa. Uh, so yeah, we definitely encourage all people who are interested in empowering African-Americans to be homeowners and they don't have to be African. So can they join online? Do you have a website uh, where they can go? And, uh, and then how much is it to become a member as an agent and perhaps as a broker? Well, as a broker, the dues are 185. And for a member, uh, a, a real estate agent member, it's 150. And that, that joins the state, local, and national. I'm sorry, the state local, yes, and National Association of Real Estate Brokers. Okay, so for one fee, you're a member of the National Association, you're a member of the California Association of Real Estate Brokers, and you're a member of the local chapter, the San Francisco chapter. And that's an annual fee, it's only once a year. Once a year, all right. No, so there's no additional fees or dues. And so no. what do you get, when you become a member, uh, what do you get, uh, like right away, we're gonna get a, uh, tickets to the Giants? <laughs> <laughs> right well, now, you get access to a great support system. <laughs> and, and lots of education and videos. In fact, we have, a, a, as Norman mentioned earlier, we have a very active uh, commercial arm. And for people who are, for, for profess, real estate professionals who've done mostly uh, residential, that's a great way to improve their, their um, base and to serve their clients better as well. So education and uh, also you become, you get a copy of the Shiva report so you understand the challenges and the um, ways that you can help to empower your, your, um, your community. I mean, it's just a, a mind a shift in terms of how we look at the business and how we look at how we can better serve us. Well, Janet, I think they should become a member so that they can become associated with you and learn from your 35 years of experience. And they should become a member just so they can perhaps, uh, if they need a broker, work with Norman or learn from Norman being a broker owner. Every agent or broker aspires one day to own their own company. At least many do. Not everybody does. But uh, I think that networking and your the experience that yep. you guys bring uh, is also an added benefit of being a member uh, of, the, of the organization. It is. It really is. And I think there's a list in one of the organizations that started a, a wants and needs. So if you have a client who wants a certain property or type of property, you can post it on your website. That's the local chapter in Oakland, ARPD. Or if you have someone who needs a buyer for a particular piece of property, you can post that on, on the website as well. 
So we're, we're doing good while we're doing business. That is fantastic. Well, Janet and Norman, do you have any final comments, maybe words of encouragement for those who are watching? This is Fair Housing Month. This is Realtors Week. Um, any final words? Well, for me, I'm, I'm grateful. And I, I change out every day that we're part of essential services and we're able to, we were able, I had one of my best years last year. But I also think in terms of those people who are at risk of losing their homes because of the pandemic. And I just want us to kind of think of ways that we can um, come up with offering compromise, have start the conversation so that that is minimized so that we don't have a lot of fallout because of the pandemic, because they stayed home, obeyed the mandate and that kind of thing. So I think that for me, that's something that I'm going to be working on a lot this year. And it, because it reminds me of that old adage of the, of the ham, uh, what do you call it, the breakfast of ham and eggs. Some of us gave a contribution and others is a sacrifice. Well, the sacrifice shouldn't be the feelings at home. Thank you, Janet. Norman, final comments. And, and I would just say, if you're listening to this, no matter where you are, you can join our organization and help. Whether you're African-American or not, you would do well to be a part of NARAP. You would be surprised at what you would learn and how it can enhance your personal business. So look us up and become a member. Thank you, Norman. Norman is right. You can go to NARAP, N-A-R-E-B.com and become a member anywhere. I don't know the number of chapters we have, but it's quite a few folks. And there's a lot of great information on the national website, nareb.com, and also the state chapter website, careb.org. Denise Mathis is a current president of the California Association of Real Estate Brokers, and uh, KREP is doing big things, and so are their chapters. I wanna thank Janet, current president and Norman for taking time today to talk with me about fair housing, about being a realtor and a member of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. I am a realtor, a member of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, very proud to be so. And if anyone decides, I say in the month of April to join the San Francisco chapter, the power is now is going to support you in your business by providing you a free full page ad in our national magazine. And so I want to encourage you to take advantage of that. Our magazine has been in existence for close to 11 years, or actually eight years, and is nationally distributed. You can go to thepowerisnow.com and check out the magazine and see the value that will bring to your business, all because you made a decision, a conscious decision to put your hand with the hands of those who's helping people to become homeowners who are fighting uh, the good fight of uh, fair housing uh, and uh, the opportunities that housing and homeownership brings to the people of all colors and all nationalities and gender. Fair housing is what uh, NARAP is all about, democracy and housing. And I love it. Thank you for watching today and for listening. For those of you who are listening on the podcast, please share this show, like us on uh, Facebook, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and let others know that the power is now. Have a wonderful day. The Power Is Now Media is worldwide with growing audience of future home buyers, investors, builders, developers, real estate agents, and brokers. The Power Is Now Media is well positioned to increase awareness and produce results for our growing roster of advertising partners. An advertisement on any of our platforms is the right step toward reaching and communicating key brand messages to a targeted network of individuals, families, and communities interested in housing. Our content areas include 
feature stories and profiles on successful real estate agents, business owners, government, and community leaders. The Power Is Now magazines are the leading resource for real estate agents, mortgage bankers, entrepreneurs, and small home ownership businesses, providing leaders with business strategy information, resources, and tools through PIN, Real Estate, and Programming Guide magazines. Stay up to the minute with real estate and mortgage news and information from industry experts. VIP agents are able to feature listings each week. The Power Is Now TV radio podcast features weekly shows that include Homebuyers Town Hall, Real Estate Roundtable, VIP Agent Spotlight, and so much more. Each week, VIP agents have opportunities to be featured guests on the shows. VIP agents can discuss and showcase houses, neighborhoods, and provide brief introduction. The interviews are unlimited 10 to 15 minutes on each current listing. This product alone separates you from your competition. The Power Is Now delivers to you market update interview to promote listing weekly, promotional biographical video, co-host a bi-monthly homebuyers town hall show, featured subject matter expert on real estate roundtable show, The Power Is Now program guide e-magazine, The Power Is Now national e-magazine, article writing and blogging, social media content customization, inclusion and press releases, graphic design services, business and performance coaching, technology support, referrals, lead generation opportunities, and management support.